We are very glad to have you join us this evening for Wednesday Night Live at Central Assembly. I'm Don Tucker, Senior Adults and Missions Pastor at Central. Happy to host this uh, session of Wednesday Night Live tonight and uh, glad you could join us. I think we have an interesting session ahead of us. We have as our guest, one of our friends from here in Central Assembly, active part of our church, Andy Rotz. Andy and uh, his wife, uh, Nancy, and their family are deeply involved in everything Central. We're grateful to have them with us. Andy is the communications director for Assemblies of God World Missions. Uh, he and Nancy have three daughters, Elisa, Natalie, and Lauren. And Elisa is now married to Levi Newell. They have a wonderful family. It's good to look out and see them uh, every Sunday in uh, live service, especially during normal times. And uh, they are career missionaries, have been in mission since 2002, and spent uh, about 12 years in pastoral work uh, before that. Andy, we are just very delighted to have you join us this evening and talk to us during Wednesday Night Live. Why don't you uh, begin by telling us a little bit about your missionary career uh, up to and including your work now as communications director. Welcome. Thank you very much. And it really is a pleasure. Thanks so much. We love the church and we love your heart for missions. And you know, we, we landed in Moldova. You know, most of the people have no idea where in the world is Moldova. In fact, I used to get that question all the time. Where in the world is Moldova? Uh, it was 2003 we landed there. And Moldova is uh, Eastern Europe, so it's right next to Romania. It used to be the former Soviet Union. It's a, I guess the church, a lot of people in church know it because of Viktor Pawlowski. It used to be right. a part of it when right. he was here. And so... Uh, we landed there with 17 suitcases, three little kids. They were one, three, and seven at that time, and we fell in love with it. I mean, we really did. We were the only ones there for our first term, and we kept building a team around us. And, uh, you know, Moldova's just kind of one of those poor countries of Europe. It's very, very rustic in many ways, but we love the people. I learned Russian, Nancy learned Romanian. We worked our way through in so many endeavors of church planning and outreaches, and then we were asked to serve as area directors for Russia and went moved to St. Petersburg, which is slightly different. I mean, 9 million people just in St. Petersburg, three times the size of the entire nation of Moldova. And then four years ago, we were asked to come back and serve as communications director, succeeding Randy Hurst, uh, the legend. <laughs> and I just say my job now is just the storyteller and just telling the stories about what God is doing around the world, which is really no different than any follower of Christ. I mean, that's what we're all tr supposed to do. Just tell the stories of what God is doing. And so I get a unique role and it's fun to see what God is doing, really kind of have that frontline seat to see what is God doing around this world. That's got to be exciting. It is. Especially after your a career experience on the ground and yeah. now expanding that to the world, actually. Yeah. You've written some wonderful things. Mm -hmm. You are either a good photographer mm -hmm. or you have a good photographer that goes <laughs> with you because uh, the quality of the photography accompanying your printed material is just excellent and mm -hmm. very enjoyable. Well, this is a, a really profitable time for us to have you with us. Uh, Central Assembly is very involved in both missions around the world and here in our own nation. And we are being next door to the headquarters mm -hmm. complex. We are very much aware of uh, what the uh, corona pandemic has done to all of our lives, to all of our schedules, to everything that we pursue. And one can only imagine uh, what it's done to the world mm -hmm. of global missions and the levels of travel that are involved in that. And, yeah legal papers and closed countries and crammed or vacant at air, airports. So we wanted you to come, uh, first of all, for other reasons as well, but first of all, we want to use you as a source to mm -hmm. give us good information and good insight as to where we've been, where we are uh, in the impact of the corona pandemic upon our efforts of global missions. Well, you know, we've, I think, in missions, it's like the U.S. I mean, the churches, we've all been scrambling, really, to try to figure it out. 
and our missionaries, for the most part, have stayed right on, on, on spot. You know, we've had to deal with some that had health issues, and they would probably have to get out, and we worked that way out. Some have just locked down and hunkered in, and we've had a, it's been a, you know, it's been a tough challenge for missionaries, and positive. So it's the, the, the difficulties as well as the positive. I think the difficulties could be isolation. So let's just be honest, you know, it's isolation. In some countries, it was even more isolated than here. So they were re restricted to their apartments, could only go out at certain times, and it's a challenge to be able to do so. So, you know, that's a, a challenge, and it, and it really plays an emotional toll even on missionaries. It, it's just human nature. The opportunities are interesting that in this entire situation, those that were locked in place, all of a sudden they had neighbors that they wanted to have conversations with that they were not open about faith before, but in this time of crisis, they opened up their heart, they opened up their lives, and people are coming to faith. So there really is a mixed blessing to this entire situation, um, both forcing it upon the missionaries, but also giving open hearts to hear the gospel. That's awesome. What about logistical issues? Uh, the way our missions program works, there's a segment of the missionary family on the field and another segment that normally is in the U.S. all the time. Part of them are at home, part of them are on the field. What logistical impact, uh, the interruptions of, of air travel, yeah. the closing of countries, uh, I even heard little snippets that there might have been isolated cases of couples where one uh, uh, of, the, of the couple was in their home country where they were working and the other half of that marriage was somewhere else. Yeah. Were those true? Did those things happen? Yeah. Tell us about how that impacted us. It was pretty rare, but we did have a situation. There was one couple, I think it was 200 days they were separated. In two wow. different countries <laughs> couldn't get in, couldn't get out, both of them. The, so the flight side of it just being shut down, especially in some of these smaller countries. So it was, I mean, that's brutal. I cannot even imagine being separated from my wife for 200 days. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting. We, there were some missionaries that came back, said, oh, we're get, we've got to leave Africa. We want to get back. We'll have better odds and be safer here. And some of those that left got COVID back here. Wow. And, and if they had stayed in Africa, they wouldn't even have had it. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's why it's not a given that you're just because you're here, you're safer than anywhere else. I think that's probably the biggest impact. This is more than we've ever had a global situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're so used to a, typh you know, a typhoon or a hurricane or something isolated, a war. I mean, you've been, you know, Africa, there's always a regional war and sometimes people have to evacuate, but this is global, so where do you go? Um, and it really did, it, it wreaked havoc on some travel. So always you're gonna have just theoretically 20% of the missionaries back here itinerating. I mean, if they have a four year term and one year back itinerating, you're gonna have 20%. We have missionaries that are itinerating, raising their support, and they're kind of massing up. So we have a, a greater percentage now that are in the States simply because they can't get clearance to go back. Thailand was a huge one. Um, I know we have some workers that are in Thailand, and we had one that I think preached at a, our missions convention a year ago or a few months ago. To get into Thailand, they were quarant somebody was quarantined. It cost them thousands of dollars because the government restricted them into a hotel for two weeks. Wow. So, you know, it is it is kind of a tough thing. So right now, we there's certain countries you can get into. Other ones, they just say, you just have to wait. I can't leave, because if I left, it would cost me thousands of dollars just to come back. And so people are moving a lot less right now. So can you put a, can you put a hypothetical percentage to what part of the world is open now for our missionaries to come and go with relative ease, or is that not possible? I think relative ease is going to be gone for a few more months, mm -hmm. but there is possibilities. So Africa quite a bit is open. I'm just starting to get some news about areas in South America that are opening. So th those are the two biggest regions. A lot of the rest of the rest of the world are, is not open. Mm -hmm. So you, you, we're very restricted. So those that are in are there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those that are not are stuck here slowly be able to trickle, trickle in if they have some residency permits. So there's some nuances, and our missionaries are pushing. They're trying to find ways to do it. Sure. And they're, and they're, they're getting some opportunities, sure. but it's been tough. It's much slower than normal. 
we hear almost every day that uh, there is a new upsurge, mm -hmm. especially in the European nations. Uh, are you seeing that in, in, in our work and in other places as well, that there is a current resurgence? The only places I'm hearing about it is Europe, as you just mentioned there, and that has probably impacted our, our workers once again, because in Spain, for example, they will get restricted one to their apartment. It's pretty tight shut down. I think Italy was brutal there for a number of months. But that's about the only place that I'm hearing about the resurgence forcing it backwards. So everything else is starting to open up. What about our national churches, those partner churches that we work with? Uh, how are they faring through all of this? You know, we get these prayer requests over and over again. I, in fact, Moldova, one of the older bishops there, Peter Borsch, he, we get this email. You know, he's sick, he's in the hospital with COVID, and we prayed and we prayed because I know the hospital conditions. Next thing you know, he's, he's out and he's healthy again. So mm -hmm. I do not know of any national leaders. We've had areas of pastors, countries where a number of pastors have passed away from COVID. And the ones that I know of are mostly in Latin America. Mm -hmm. uh, that was hit so hard that we lost a number of pastors. But it's been slowing down. I know our churches are, are dealing with it the same way. Interesting, we've had at least two or three missionaries, they, they said, the crisis here has almost renewed a relationship with the national church. Awesome. And because the national church had to do exactly what our churches had, here had to do, go <laughs> online, go on a Facebook Live. They had to do all this. And the missionaries, maybe they weren't tech savvy, but they were a little bit more tech savvy. So they became the technical people, taught them how to do streaming services, moved everything online, because that's another aspect of the world and the global situation is everybody has a phone, everybody can get online, no matter where, no matter what country they can do it. And so our missionaries have been helping our national churches as well move some of their opportunities to do ministry online. And in the Muslim world, there is online services that are happening over and over and over again, and hundreds and hundreds of people are coming to Christ. So this has forced people to look for an answer, and missionaries are at the forefront of it. So it's, it's good news. Great. I'm glad to hear that. Well, a burning question for us here at Central, I think, as in any local church, would be uh, how can we best respond uh, during this particular season, with all the restrictions that our missionaries are facing, how can we best respond to the current circumstances? And Andy, I'm thinking in particular, uh, my role, one of my roles as missions pastor, I meet with a lot of missionaries. I love coffee, so we drink coffee. And um, I hear a similar story from most of them. Uh, I usually, in the course of an, of an inter interview, will get around to asking the question, how long have you been raising your funds? Mm -hmm. And uh, interestingly, I hear from a lot of them, well, I started in January. Mm -hmm. And starting in January of 2020 almost yeah. makes me catch my breath, realizing the circumstances that they're trying to raise their um, budget under. Now, for your benefit, I've never found one that was angry or dramatic or even complaining, very realistic about it. But I would like to ask you to talk to us a minute about, as a local church, as your mm -hmm. local church, mm -hmm. how can we best respond uh, to missions in the day of a global pandemic, and you can answer that as far as missionaries raising their funds uh, here in the U.S., new missionaries going out, and on the field veteran missionaries as well. I think, I think coronavirus is going to cause us to really explore what it means to be the church. And we talk about the church. In English, it's such a loaded term. You say, I go to church, or that's a beautiful church. But you and I know the church is just people. And so this has forced us. And I, we were talking ahead of time. There's a huge percentage that haven't even back, been back to a live service yet. They're, they're, they're nervous about that. And that's, that's across the board. I'm preaching at places and churches will say we're down 50%, we're down 30%. So they're not seeing that. But the church is never meant to be the, the place that you gather on Sunday. It is a group of people. And so we're even in this kind of format, we're almost redefining what is a church. We're talking through a screen or we're talking through, through Facebook. We have to recognize that we are the church. It is people. And so this is not just a Sunday morning gathering. 
the Great Commission is not conditional on when everything can be nice and we can all hear the message. And I think probably as a church, we need to almost redefine our responsibilities. In this, we've all realized we can't be by ourselves. If you're stuck by yourself, it is, it is depressing, it's brutal. So we have a small group of friends. And maybe across Central Assembly, and let's use that as an example, if we're hundreds of people, what if we broke that down and said, hey, I've got a group of 30 here, but I'm going to be passionate. The 30 of us right now are going to, through the church, I mean, still work through the, the larger Central Assembly, we're going to sit down and we're going to listen to a missionary share their vision. And we're going to gather together and we are going to commit. Maybe that even could be a financial thing. But we look at it in a different way to say, there's my group of friends right here. We're not comfortable going to a live service or we can't do this. But that all of us together are going to make a financial commitment to support through our central assembly, through the larger, and a financial way to get missionaries to the field. So our missionaries are traveling and they are still getting support. They're still having some pledges come in. Churches are still banking on it. We see that commitment because the DNA of, age, of our Assemblies of God churches is missions. But I, th I think we have to personally own it and maybe take it to a smaller area, both in prayer and in giving and support. I definitely agree with you. That's very creative thinking. And I see that uh, in the missionaries that I visit with. They're mm -hmm. extremely creative, mm -hmm. some of the things that they're doing now. Yeah. Uh, we have a system here at Central where every newsletter that comes in from one of our missionaries, and they come to us in hard copy, they also come to us electronically, and we have a system where we review every one of those uh, newsletters. And uh, it's amazing the frequency of some of the newsletters mm -hmm. has increased. They've gotten a lot more personal. Mm -hmm. They share a bit more about family life and children and mm -hmm. things like that. And they can be amazingly encouraging to mm -hmm. us uh, as a supporting church. So the idea of being creative uh, is uh, true both on the part of the missionaries yeah. And it has to be true on our part uh, as sending churches as well. That's very creative thinking and something we'll have to think about right here at your home <laughs> church as well. You know, we, can, we really can do it if we would break this thing up and think of it as a bunch of cells, almost like we're a honeycomb. Mm -hmm. I mean, just get that grid of a honeycomb. If each cell, each community would just link their arm and say, we want to do our part and we're going to pray. And, and maybe that's how it is. You've got to find bands. You know, they, that was the old phrase from the World War II, the band of brothers, you know, mm -hmm. which band of brothers and sisters, that they say, we are going to pray for Italy. Just give us Italy, and we're going to intercede. And instead of with the missionary of the week that goes out on the, sure. on the screen, instead sure. of that, that band says, hey, we're going to sit around this table, and we're going to pray. Or we're going to get on Zoom, and there's going to be eight of us. We, we don't know, care what it's, going to, what it's going to look like, but we are going to take that responsibility. And I think it needs to push off to, the, to the, the lowest level to each member sitting on the pew taking that ownership. This is not the church's responsibility of missions. It's my responsibility to do, have missions. And if we each of us own that to say it is my responsibility to send and to pray, you know, sometimes we want to kick it off to the, quote, church, and we just don't take individual responsibility. So this is just a challenge for us, I think, right now to own it. Or it's not going to happen. Yeah, for sure. Uh, fortunately, here at Central, we've not seen a significant drop in missions no. income, and we've been able to add new missionaries Praise at the God. same time. But reaching beyond the, the very important question of monthly support yeah. and finances, reaching beyond that, Let's talk for a second about the missionary on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we uh, respond to those, that missionary, those families, uh, in ways that will be encouraging, supportive, yeah. helpful to them, other than uh, in finances? Yeah. I, I think even more important than finances is just relationship. We all know that. It's just that friendship, that encouraging thing. I think if you get an encouraging note, I remember times even as a missionary when you get a letter or somebody emailed us, um, you know, reached out to us and they told us they were praying and they were led by the Spirit to pray at a certain time, how much that meant to us. So I think right now, let's just recognize our missionaries are facing some extreme isolation. 
and sometimes discouragement because all their plans that they had are kind of falling through and they've got to work a different route. And so I, th I think somehow we've got to just encourage them. Let's get behind them. Let's listen to them. Be a listener. Expect something different. You know, they're not going to be able to do a crusade of a thousand people. They're not going to be able to do a construction of, of a building project right now. I know we, we face that. All these missions teams have been canceled. But they're talking to neighbors and they're sharing Christ and they need our encouragement and they're Almost the measurement of mission success is going to be counted in the hands, handfuls of people that they're sharing Christ with. But I think Christmas time reminds us of anything. This is incarnation. Mm -hmm. Jesus came, mm -hmm. put on the human form to be with us. Incarnation. That's why we value missionaries. That's why missionaries go to the field. Because it's not just sending the message. It's living among the people. It's eating the food that we were talking about ahead of time. Drinking the coffee. You love your African coffee. And wherever. I mean, you just you drink the coffee, eat the food, you're with people, and people see you walk out Jesus Christ. And so it's, it's why we have to have people in place. And so just encourage our missionaries. Write them, write them emails and get on there. Just be their support. I think that's pretty key right now. Sure, sure. Well, time is swiftly getting oh. away from us, and we want to have Andy lead us in some good, strong missions prayer here in just a few moments. But before we do that, I'd like for us to reach beyond mm -hmm. the uh, coronavirus pandemic and talk for just a moment, if you can, about, uh, in your view, uh, what are the strategic, the most strategic opportunities that we are facing uh, in missions in this hour? Uh, I'll probably just emphasize three quick things. One, I never, I want to, it's an anchor point. We need to be people of the Spirit. We need to be led and directed by the Holy Spirit. So I, I think our strategy first is Holy Spirit call people. So we need to have people here. And this time when all the voices of the movies and the sports are all still down, they can hear the call. And I pray that it admits this, even during this time that people are called into missions. Two, there's, I'm going to talk about some strategy of areas of the world that, I, that need concentrated prayer. And two areas that are just passionate upon our, our hearts right now are the Buddhist world and the Hindu world. Mm -hmm. Both of those are, we've had the least amount of, if I could use success, but success in church planning. So decades before, decades ago, we had people... They started that prayer focus for Muslims, yeah. the Muslim world. Right, I think, right. I mean, you know, those sure. they were legends. And for decades, we've been praying, and we're seeing amazing things happen mm -hmm. in the in the Muslim world. People come into Christ, people come into faith, and I think it's because of decades of prayer. So we need to pray strategically for the Buddhist world and the Hindu world to open up. And then, I'm seeing also you see China in that northern Asia. Um, boy, there are some great restrictions that are happening. So. I was in Russia, the same thing. There's, there's some governmental controls that are going to make it challenging for the gospel to go forward. And we just need to pray for openings to happen, creativity. God can part the sea and his people can go through it. And so those, let's look at the hard political areas. Let's look at the Buddhist and uh, Hindu worlds. That, we still want to pray for the rest. We're still believing we have missionaries to every country. But we need a breakthrough the same way we did in the Muslim world. And we still need boots on the ground. And we need boots yeah. on the ground. We need another thousand missionaries <laughs> called and serving. Well, thank you. This has been very informative. We design a, a moment like this for us to have a, a season of prayer as well. And uh, we, we don't look at this as uh, uh, an ob observation period. Mm -hmm. or a spectator period. Andy is going to share some requests with us, and then he himself will lead us in prayer. But I want to encourage each of you, as, as he leads us in prayer, that means you're going to be praying along with us as we take these next few moments to, to really face the potential of traveling around the world in touching peoples and nations everywhere. So Landy, Andy, mm -hmm. as the Spirit leads you okay. and what those needs might be on your heart, lead us in prayer uh, for these next moments and uh, we'll be praying along with you. Okay, I'm gonna ask you just to pray for two main areas. One is gonna be missionaries. 
As Pastor Don mentioned, missionaries are what it's all about. We want boots on the ground. So let's pray for their protection as they travel, as the doors open. Let's pray for health and safety. Let's pray for those that are already on the field, that they will continue to have open doors and opportunities, and for their health, because many of them are in places where medical care is very limited. And then let's pray for breakthroughs. I just think we need to continue to pray for breakthroughs. This is a time in a moment of crisis God can break through. So I want to pray for our missionaries, but we want to pray for doors to open to the hearts that are people there. So would you just join me in prayer and let's do the same. Amen. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks. We depend on you and the power of your Holy Spirit is really you, Lord. You, you lead us, you call people. Lord, we can't recruit anybody. We don't, we don't even want to recruit anybody. We need your spirit to call and speak to the hearts. And so Lord, I pray right now for our future missionaries, for those that are sitting in pews, the, the kids that are running around, a yes, kids' Lord. church, the youth group, Lord, they might be, you're going to place a call on their life. And Lord, I pray that at this time, in these days, and when everything is shut down, or everything is quiet in a different way, that your voice will go through and speak to them, and you'll begin to call missionaries. Lord, I pray there won't be a shortage of missionaries that are being called, but even in this time, we'll have another wave of workers that'll step forth and say, yes, Lord, I will go. Lord, there are so many places. And we pray right now, agree together for another thousand missionaries for yes, AG Lord. World Missions. Yes. Lord, we need people to go. And so Lord, we're praying for that. Lord, we pray right also for the missionaries that are on the field. Lord, we ask for protection for them, for health protection. Lord, keep them, keep them healthy, keep them safe in these times of crisis. Lord, I pray for their that your, your angels will be about them. Lord, I pray for the missionaries that are raising their support right now, struggling with it in some ways because they're not able to stand before a congregation and preach, but you're giving them opportunities. And I pray there may be such a band of, of brothers and sisters that yes. rallies behind them. Lord, we are so grateful for the, the church that has continued to have a missions focus. And over and over and over again, Lord, I hear about churches that sacrifice, sacrificially giving to support their missionaries so it will not even lessen one bit. Lord, I've heard of pastors that have even laid aside sacrifice, sacrifices out of their salaries so that the mission support would never lag. And Lord, we just give you thanks. Lord, we pray for our missionaries right now that those boots on the ground will be strengthened. And Lord, now we also pray for opportunities. Yes, God. Lord, in this time when people face life and death situations, when conflict of the soul is there, they can hear your voice and they can hear you calling them. So Lord, I pray right now today, we pray for the Muslim world. Lord, we pray for those things that look so closed, the Iran, Iraq, Syria, the nations across North Africa and across the Arabian Peninsula, those places that in our own opinions look so impossible. Lord, I pray you do a, yes. a move of God and yes. may there be such a a wave of Muslims coming to faith that we'll not even believe it. We can look back and say, it is of the Lord. Lord, I pray for the Buddhist world. Lord, we have labored for years all the way across Asia. and Oh, Lord, it's so hard. And so, Lord, we pray right now for a breakthrough there. We pray for spiritual breakthrough, a revival, a move of God. Lord, we don't just pray for one church to be planted, but we pray for hundreds of churches. Yes, God. Lord, we pray that your spirit will reign, that it may just turn. There may be a, a move of God unprecedented in history. Lord, I pray for the Hindu world, all the pressures that are there. Lord, we know it's, it's challenging in India right now, the restrictions that are coming against all of the work that is non-Hindu. Lord, we pray against that right now. And the same thing for Northern Asia. Lord, that those doors will open, the political restrictions will end, that opportunities will, will open up once again for the gospel to go forth. And God, we don't even understand all this. We don't understand what's happening. We don't understand what's going to happen next month even. None of us could have foretold what was going to happen in these last few months, but nothing takes you by surprise. Amen. And so, yes. Lord, all this that we have, we, we don't have very much, Lord. We just come here today and all we have is some fish and bread and you can multiply it. Yes. And so, Lord, we pray that, and that you will multiply the, the little bit that we have that the little bit that every missionary is holding, the little bit that every church has, multiply it for your kingdom because you desire that none would perish. And so, Lord, you're the good shepherd and your sheep know your voice. And I pray that this climate that we face right now, your voice will just echo across this world. 
and that people will know that there is a rock that they can run to, that they can stand against all the winds and the storms that the, the crisis is facing and, and hitting them with, that they can stand on you. And so do we pray it now. Bless our churches. Bless our people in our churches. I pray that they may be encouraged, not by the negative news that they see, but by the news that you are doing the impossible Amen. even yes. today, Lord. Yes, Lord. Nothing has stopped, and yes, you are Lord. planting your church, and the gates of hell will not stand against it. So, Lord, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we've prayed for missions tonight, and before we go, I'd like for you to join your hearts with mine for just a moment, and let's pray for uh, Andy and Nancy and their family. Lord, we thank you for the Rots family, uh, your gift to your church. We thank you for their talents, their abilities, their giftings. We thank you for their calling. We thank you for their energy. And we pray now the protecting hand of God upon them in all that, all that they are doing, all of their endeavors. Keep them well. Keep them safe in travel. Keep them full of spiritual creativity, O oh Lord. Use them mightily for your glory and for the sake of your kingdom. We'll give you all the praise for it in Christ's strong name. Amen. Amen. Andy, thank you for Thanks. joining us tonight. It's been fun. It's been a great joy, and we'll have a cup of that good African coffee together soon. <laughs> Look forward to it. God bless each one of you for being with us tonight.